Today's agenda. What we'll be talking about, it's a, it's a short session, you'll be pleased to know, so hopefully you can get back out in the sun. Um, short session with some time for questions at the end. Um, we're going to be talking about how you can build the perfect team to run a Facebook challenge at your organisation. Um, we're going to, you know, obviously um, there are many kind of moving parts uh, and I appreciate that there's lots of different types of organisations on the call and lots of different um sizes of teams so it may be that you're at an organization where you know you're one two three or four of these team members and um, but hopefully this will still give you a nice steering guidance of what you're going to need to do to, to to deliver a successful facebook challenge you may be someone who's run um loads of facebook challenges so this may all be information that you're aware of but hopefully it will act as a good refresher for you and if you're someone who's looking to run more facebook challenges or run your first facebook challenge then this is going to provide you with all the information you need to ensure that you're best equipped to run that successful challenge so quick uh, run through on what we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at some benchmarks that you'll be aiming to hit to ensure you achieve challenge success we're going to be looking at a few decisions that you can make to help you get there. And then finally, we're going to be looking at the dream team that you need to assemble, a bit like the Avengers, um, to achieve success. Although the characters I've opted for are sort of like a poor man's Avengers. So um, hopefully you can re relate to uh, the people that you're you're going to be working with on uh, on these Facebook challenges. So what are you looking to achieve? Well, apart from obviously delivering a Facebook challenge, which brings in a great ROI for your organization and some great leads to get onto your database and on, you know, onto future uh, supporter journeys that you can hopefully deliver some lifetime value from. You're looking to hit these benchmarks. You're looking to achieve these benchmarks in our Facebook challenge funnel to give yourself the best chance of success. Now, this deck is gonna be sent out after the call. So um, you'll have these to hand going forward. So obviously we appreciate these will have changed over the last few years. So if you run your first challenge in 2020, it's gonna look a little bit different to how it looks now. Um, but a really great way for you to budget and plan for your Facebook challenge to ensure that you can try and hit these benchmarks is through utilizing our challenge budget calculator, which is in our Facebook challenges playbook. If you don't have access to our Facebook Challenges playbook, drop your CSM an email after this call or our support team, and we'll ensure that we get you and your colleagues added to the playbook. So yeah, as mentioned, these are the main benchmarks you're gonna be looking to hit to achieve. So I won't go into detail on each individual section. I think Jill covered this on her last call as well, um, but this is uh, you'll have this to hand going forward. So you know what you're aiming for to give yourself the best chance of success. How are you gonna get there? So obviously the main part of this webinar is to identify the roles or the team members uh, that you need to achieve success. However, there are a few steps that you can take to also give yourselves a better chance of hitting your targets. First up, you wanna make sure you choose the right challenge. So if we look at a self-sacrifice challenge as an example, so a dip a day or a cold water immersion challenge, you gotta think, are people more likely to raise funds for a cold water challenge if they're taking part in August when they're potentially on holiday in a warmer climate or are they going to be more likely to raise money if it's October and the mornings and the evenings are darker and the weather is colder um you know is there going to be real self-sacrifice involved so making sure that you choose the right challenge for the right time of year is really important so yeah make sure you give enough thought about that and who your target audience is next up Utilize the Facebook Challenges Playbook. You're honestly going to be bored of hearing me say playbook by the end of this call, but it really is the one source of truth for all things Facebook Challenges with GivePanel. It's been built by digital fundraising and ads experts, so do make sure you, so if you could make sure you give yourself enough time to work through the various modules um, and share with the relevant team members as well. As mentioned, you know, you could have run four, five, six Facebook challenges, but this, you know, this is an ever changing um, model. Like the principles remain the same, but we're constantly looking at the best ways that you can recruit the best leads and so on. So really do make sure that you're familiarizing yourself with the challenges playbook, which is which is updated regularly. Step three, follow our ad journey. So this is all important. Um, we have a specific recruitment journey, as I'm sure many of you may be familiar with now, but it's paramount to the success of Facebook challenges. Um, 
Again, this is stored within the Facebook Challenges playbook. Um, so make sure you share it with the relevant people internally, or if you're the person that's going to be running these Facebook Challenge ads, ensure you familiarize yourself with them so that you can run these correctly. And finally, be the inspiration your fundraisers need. It's not okay to just set up a Facebook challenge, put it out there and expect it to work. You really need, to, you know, you really need to inspire these people to actually want to take on that challenge. You really want them to be able to feel the connection to your cause and want to be passionate about fundraising for you. So a lot of this is we focused on the, you know, creating a hyper engaged community, which is the Facebook group itself. And we'll talk about which team members you want involved in that later on in this session. So there are just a few extra tips to help you um, in achieving your targets, but we will move on now and talk about who it is that's going to help you get there. So the Give Panel Expert, or in this case, a bit of a Bob the Builder character. Um, so yeah, Bob the Builder was there, a bit of an inspiration growing up. Um, <laughs> it just gets the job done, as they say. And you really need someone who knows their way around Give Panel to do that for you in your Facebook challenge. So this person is you know, going to build all of the elements within Give Panel. Um, you want someone that's going to be organized. You want someone with a high attention to detail, especially when it comes to things like double checking the email journey has been put in correctly and so on. Um, someone that, you know, likes using Give Panel uses give panel on a daily basis if possible someone that speaks with their csm often and attends these sorts of webinars so there is a chance that if you're on this webinar you are this person um so yeah you need someone that's going to know how to build all the various things within give panel uh, which is obviously important so your task is either you or you have to get buy from someone in your organization who can build the event and the custom fundraisers and the event registration form um, you also they're going to be able to um, build your email journeys, your on page messaging and uh, create labels and so on. Um, but also important to this is the delivery of the stewardship process as well. So don't forget during Facebook challenges, we recommend you send on page messages to your fundraisers to thank them. So ensuring that you've got enough team members to um, deliver the on page messaging um, is really important. So you need the Give Panel expert or experts to build what you need within the platform, and then deliver a great stewardship journey for your fundraisers throughout. Next up, we have the digital marketing genius. For anyone who's familiar with Mad Men, uh, we've got Peggy Olsen here as that character. Although in fairness, thinking about it, I'm not sure much digital <laughs> advertising went on back then. However, I thought she was a great example of someone who knows exactly what she's doing and how to attract great leads for your organization. So um, yeah, the role of this person really is to recruit high quality leads that will convert into active fundraisers. So that's people that have at least one or more donation on their page for your organization. Uh, and again, this will be done through running an ads campaign. You do want this person to be skilled in Facebook ad management. Um, it's not gonna work if this is someone who's just gonna set up an ad campaign, put some money behind it at the start and then let it run for a month. Ideally, you need someone who's gonna live in that uh, Facebook ads manager that's gonna be meticulous with looking at your cost per leads and, and deciding which ads are performing well, which ads are delivering you fundraisers, which ads, uh, you know, you want to invest more money in to ensure that you're getting those right people into the Facebook group and in turn fundraising for your organization. So how are you going to go about getting these people on board? You need buy-in, obviously. So you need to speak with the marketing or digital team. Um, as mentioned already as well, we really recommend that you champion our ads journey. So, uh, Share that with these people via the Facebook Challenges playbook. Um, and again, or if it's yourself running it, make sure that you familiarize yourself with the ads and journey and, and, and you know our best practices and advice. Um, one thing that I know, uh, you know you're know you going to need to do is provide this person or at least give yourself enough notice. You all work at organizations where there are multiple different types of campaigns happening all the time. Some will be fundraising asks, some might be awareness raising campaigns. So it's really important that you give your marketing and digital marketing team enough time to get this set up. You don't want to be rushing this last minute and trying to get ads created and you know shipped out the day before you go live on a challenge, which believe you me happens a lot. Um, so yeah, just make sure you provide a nice project delivery timeline. Um, Again, this is all in the Challenges Playbook itself, 
But the sort of typical rule of thumb that we always uh, abide by, if possible, is a month of planning. So getting all that creative together, a month of recruitment, a month of the challenge, and then the final month, you do your analysis of how the challenge has performed. So just make sure that you give these people enough notice. Uh, and I'm sure you will uh, have some successful ads. Um, the other final thing, just to point out, obviously, you may be an organization that works with a partner. We're absolutely fine with agencies uh, having access to the challenges playbook. Uh, we have provided some with access in the last couple of weeks. This resource is there for all to be used. And again, you're going to be working with people who know ads inside out and are very used to running certain types of campaigns. But the ad journey that we have at Give Panel for the challenges is quite a specific and different uh, journey to what they may be used to run it. So just make sure that people have what they need and are familiar with uh, the Facebook challenges model recruitment. Next up, the community fundraising champions. Now, Lenny Henry is making an appearance here. Why? Because I'm sure you can all think of Lenny, uh, Lenny Henry hosting Comet Relief and what a fantastic job he does as sort of like that telethon host and getting everybody G'd up and supported and, uh, and you know, ready to take on the world. Um, the mission of these people that are going to be running your Facebook group is to essentially get people willing to run for a brick wall for your organization by the end of the challenge. So, You've got to have people that are great motivators, great communicators. A really great tip for this is, and this used to happen a lot at the start of Facebook challenges. I'm not sure if I see it as much anymore, but a really great tip is if you can get someone to actually take the challenge on as well, it works at the organization, then you're going to be setting yourself up for success. Someone that can be the challenge influencer for that group. Um, I'm not sure if you'll mind me name dropping him, but the best I've ever seen at this is our now colleague David Burns when he was at the Matter Foundation. You know, he used to put video content in the group of getting in a wetsuit and going for a run or shaving his hair or whatever it might be. Now, you don't have to go too extreme, um, but you need people in the group that are going to bring the energy, bring the positive vibes and provide, you know, innovative, um, sorry, inspiring uh, content that's going to make people uh, want to take on this challenge and raise funds for you. So this isn't fair, you know, for one person to do it all. I appreciate you might be at a smaller organization, but a couple of tips that you may want to, uh, you know, employ are trying to get additional moderators and champions. Now, in an ideal world, you'll have colleagues that are able to support with this. But again, you might have a lot of other fundraising activity going on. Uh, you might be spread a little bit thin. So if you can think of any volunteers or any people that have taken on previous challenges for you that are really great at inspiring and chatting to other people, you might just want to reach out to them a month or so in advance and say, listen, we're running another challenge. We'd love to have you in the group just so that you can respond to people and react to their content. At the end of the day, if you're posting engaging content and you're encouraging your supporters to do the same, then they are going to be sharing that on Facebook. It is going to be spread far and wide over their social networks, with their friends, with their family, and therefore their fundraising page is going to become, you know, more prevalent on the on the newsfeed for for their for their network. So in turn, they are going to raise more money. So yeah, the sort of people that you want in this Facebook group are the kind of people that are going to bring the energy at all times. Um, and then also, if possible, you're going to want a few people to just assist with moderation. So a few tasks for this, obviously, is find someone who fits this mold. You know, it might not be someone that works directly in your team. You might just have someone in the office who really likes doing this sort of stuff or creating content. Get them in the group. They'll be perfect for it. If you can recruit the additional moderators, as I've just mentioned, we'd highly advise that you do so. We do have more content in, guess what, the Facebook Challenges Playbook. Uh, we've got things like a group post swipe file, really engaging posts, just ideas for you to put things into the group and, and make sure that people are interacting and coming back to the group. And then finally, um, you probably are going to want to create a little rotor of some description as well. If you've got multiple people um, moderating the group, they might have it open on a second screen uh, just for a couple of hours a day. But this will just ensure that, you know, everyone pulls their way and remember this is all about building that perfect team this should not fall on one individual so if you can get as many people involved to support in the group fantastic but that main champion that you need needs to be a lenny henry type host and uh yeah you'll be well on your way to challenge success next up the fulfillment maestro in hindsight 
not entirely sure while I've chosen Del Boy for this now because I'm not I'm not sure there was a uh, many uh, many episodes where things went particularly well on that front. But I thought if you're looking for someone to source something for you, uh, then there's no better man for the job. But basically. As you, I'm sure you know, Facebook challenges, uh, a big hook to people taking these on is an incentive, whether that be a T-shirt or a swimming cap, depending on your challenge. So you need to basically have someone that's going to ensure that your participants are sent their incentives in a timely and efficient manner. Um, and, you know, they may also be someone that's going to support you in sourcing those in the first place. Um, the type of person that you want is going to be highly organized, uh, experienced at managing fulfillment. Uh, and uh, a great communicator as well obviously you need to know if there's anything going wrong in the supply chain hopefully there won't be but yeah th these are kind of skills that you're looking for in your organization now again depending on the size of your organization and the size of your team it may be that you yourself are sending these out which is totally fine um, it may be that you have a fulfillment house that is going to be doing this for you um, but again, it's really important to, to make sure you've got a plan in place to ensure that your fundraisers receive their incentive within, you know, uh, the first week or, or 10 days is what we tend to advise um, so that they know when to expect it. And you're not constantly being hounded in the group with questions like, where's my T-shirt? Where's my T-shirt? So, again, I think one part of this whole process is giving people enough notice. So make sure you've got buying from the team responsible early. The last thing you want to be doing is ordering incentives whilst your challenge ads are live, you want to make sure you've got everything in place ready to go for when you launch that event. Um, the other thing that you might want to do is give them access to GivePanel as well, or this may fall back to the GivePanel expert and you'll work collaboratively to ensure that a process is in place to ensure that these are delivered okay. So an example of that might be anyone that gets sent a t-shirt, you would then add a label to say um, item fulfilled or whatever it might be. What you have in GivePan, obviously, is your list of registrations and your list of fundraisers. So it's a really simple way for you to pull out a date range and ensure that you fulfill all of the incentives for the relevant people. And finally, some other experts that you're going to want to have on your team. So you're going to need a creative designer. Edna Mode came straight to mind. Big fan of The Incredibles when I was younger. Um, so you're going to need a few assets for this challenge. Now, it's not as, uh, you know, labor intensive as potentially some other fundraising campaigns but there are going to be a few things that you want to get built so you're going to want um, a group banner you're going to want a fundraising banner you're going to want potentially e-badges and milestone to send to people um, obviously a, an important part of this is the facebook ads again all of the advice on how we recommend you deliver that creative is within the facebook challenges playbook but you're going to want to make sure you've got someone who can pull together uh, designs for you the database manager and team i've put benji dunn in here from mission impossible um i think that all database managers are heroes when i worked at jdrf uh, our head of the database team was incredible and i think he ended up sort of doing everything that was probably sat outside of his role as well because he just knew how to work uh, all the tech so we can't we can't fault the database teams they're so integral to charities and i think you know the main reason you want to have a process uh, in place with them or a relationship with them for facebook challenges is a huge reason that you're running this event is to deliver new leads and new fundraisers and new supporters for your organization. So you're only going to get, you're going to want to get a process in place whereby you can export those registrations and fundraisers out of GivePanel and get them uploaded and added to your database and onto the relevant supported journey. And finally, it's always great to have compliance on side. Uh, I've gone for Hermione here because I can just, you know, she's she's always doing things by the book. And I think that's absolutely how you have to be as a compliance manager. And rightly so. Um, I mean, a prime example is what is happening right now. You know, who could have predicted that this was going to this change was going to happen with Meta and, to, and, and the PayPal Giving Fund? Obviously, on your end, you need to accept that uh, and, and, and that you're going to use PPGF going forward. Um, so just having someone that you can chat to um, is, is really important. And also, you've got you know, data capture forms that you're using within GivePanel. So you want to make sure that if you're recruiting all these fantastic leads, that you then have the ability to contact them going forward. So you've got to make sure that you're you're complying with the internal policies when it comes to GDPR and marketing opt-ins and so on. So that is your dream team. Now it may be a bunch of 
<laughs> it's a bit of a mismatched team, to be totally honest. But just to kind of rerun through those again before we move on to the questions is you're going to need that Give Panel expert, that person who's going to build everything for you and ensure that it's all set up from the Give Panel side. You're going to need the digital marketer, the person that's going to get those fantastic ads created for you to deliver those brilliant leads to your Facebook group, who will in turn go on to fundraise for you. The community champion, the host of the telethon, you're going to need your Lenny Henry characters in that Facebook group. You want people doing wacky things, creating videos, sharing inspiration as to why people should be taken on the challenge so that especially through that forming stage of the group at the start, people feel comfortable and willing to post their own achievements and updates as they go. You need the creative designer. As mentioned, there's a few assets that you're going to want to make sure that the look and feel of the event is nice. As you know, we do tend to say keep it safe with Facebook challenges. You don't have to go overboard, but you're going to want some nice assets to make sure that it's a nice personalized fundraising um, experience. You're also going to need the fulfillment maestro. So don't forget the incentives are a huge part of the challenge. A lot of people uh, sign up because of that incentive. And then that community champion in the group converts them into fundraisers through bringing the energy. So make sure you've got a team in place to fulfill all of those orders. Compliance, again, just to make sure you're ticking all the boxes from your GDPR front uh, and you can contact these people in the future. And then that database pro or legend, shall we say, who's going to get all of those fundraisers onto your database so that you can contact them in the future. So that is the session. Um, so now we're going to move over onto Q&A. And um, so I am going to stop. Well, I can stop sharing my screen for a second. I'm just going to see if uh, the lovely Faith is going to join me for some questions. And there you are. Wow. Welcome, welcome. Um, cool. So I will just dive into the Q and A section. So um, please do pop any questions that you have in at the bottom. We can chat about anything that we've just looked at on this call. Um, the first question in is from Cara Bright. Uh, thanks for the question, Cara. And it says, is it usual for Facebook pages to be monitored during office hours? It has been mentioned that this needs to be monitored on a weekend. Is that usually how it works? Um, so, yeah, if we're being totally honest, Cara, um, you do want to try and have some people monitoring the group, you know, at all times because you're going to have questions come into the group um that's why designing a rotor is is really useful um if you're going to be really stretched and you're a small team and there aren't that many of you you can obviously put a couple of posts out to say it might be checked you know intermittently throughout the weekend you're not going to have to be sat there glued to the screen at all time at times sorry um but you are going to have people posting content um, so you're going to need to make sure that there's nothing inappropriate being posted or any scammers or anything like that. You're also going to want to make sure that you can respond to people in a timely manner. So I think, you know, during the working week, if there's a few of you that are willing to maybe do an hour or two a day, have it open in the background, that works great. And then if there is anyone that can dip in for a little bit over the weekend, then that would be, uh, you know, advisable. But obviously, I appreciate it's not the same for everyone. um next question from richard so um with the change over to paypal giving fund is there anything we need to do actively as a charity or is it a case of accepting the changes if all okay internally so i don't want to give you an incorrect answer here richard um so uh i will we will share the um well the link to uh, our help article has been shared in the webinar chat. So I'd absolutely advise uh, you clicking on there to see what it says. Um, but yes, my understanding is you just need to accept that you'll be moving over to PayPal Giving Fund. Do we have any other question, please? We just have one about where is the Give Panel Playbook located? So I will repop the link in the chat. Um, there's just a little quick form to fill out for with your email address so that we can get you added into that for you, Megan. Fantastic. Thank you, Faith. Oh. Oh, I think Richard asked that as well. Um, so yeah, that, that uh, form that Faith has pasted applies and for you, Hannah, as well. 
Um, and will this, oh yeah, you've already answered that. Okay, couple more uh, t uh, couple more questions coming in now. So, um, Habibi, I'm interested in the challenge benchmarks you shared at the beginning of this webinar. It seemed to suggest a cost per lead of four to seven pounds, which appears quite high. So we'll answer that live. And again, please do feel free to check out the info on ads in the Facebook Challenges playbook, as it's a lot, uh, you know, there's much more detail in there. Um, it's been pulled together by my colleague and ads expert, um, Danny, who is based over in Australia. But yes, that is the cost per lead that we are typically seeing with Facebook Challenges now, if you want to ensure that you're going to be delivering people that are actually going to fundraise for your challenge. So a few, you know, a couple of years ago when Facebook challenges first went live, um, it was very much a case of cast that net as far and as wide as possible and optimize for the lowest cost per lead. Get as many people into the Facebook group as you can, and in turn, you're going to still uh, convert a high percentage of them into fundraisers. As more Facebook challenges, you know, have been run, as people are more familiar with them now, as more people have done them, um, we, we started to notice a little while ago that that wasn't actually the best tactic or technique anymore. And it was much better to try and, uh, you know, optimize for cost per active fundraiser. So getting people into the group that are actually going to fundraise for you. So there's been a few changes made, uh, again, as outlined in the playbook around targeting your ads slightly and more specifically. Um, but, uh, oh, sorry, I think Jill just popped something in the chat as well. Um, but what you'll be seeing with this, with the way the Facebook challenges are run now is you may have less leads, but they're going to be better quality leads. They're going to be more likely to fundraise for your organization. So I hope that helps Khabibi. But again, any other questions off the back of that, do let me know. Diane. Do you want to pick this one, Faith, or shall I go? I mean, we don't, we can, we can, we can swap. Just, people are probably bored of my, of my voice. It's entirely up to you. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've come from the charity background, so you've probably had more experience with the t-shirt bandits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a great question, Diane. It is, it is, it is a bit tricky um, and, and it depends. Um, I mean, Unfortunately, T-shirt bandits, as they were aptly named a little while ago, uh, do exist. And you will find people registering for your challenge that when you then click onto their Facebook profile, also have 10 fundraising pages open for um, other Facebook challenges with, with, with nothing raised. Seems like a bizarre hobby to me, collect, collecting charity T-shirts. But there's obviously quite a lot of people out there that are keen to. Um, I think the way that the ads are being run these days, again, is to is to try and mitigate against that. So, um, again, I'd recommend checking out the, uh, the copy around this in the playbook. But what we used to do is lead with copy like free T-shirt register here. That would genuinely just deliver loads of people that were looking for a freebie. So we like to try and avoid using words like free in the ad copy going uh, uh, from now on. Um, but, yeah, if, if I'm being totally honest, there just are. You, there is going to be a percentage of people that take on the challenge that may not go on and fundraise, but are registered for the incentive. Now, there are other ways around this. Some charities uh, ran campaigns and have tested sort of over the last couple of years, whereby you actually only send a T-shirt out to someone once they've received their first donation. So that is a ta tactic you could look at utilising. However, we do think there would be, you know, you would end up missing out on, on, on some active fundraisers because we know that when that T-shirt lands through the letterbox and someone's like, oh, they've actually sent this to me now, I better take part and fundraise. Um, you know, they might be on zero pounds at first, but then they would tend to go on and fundraise. So there are a couple of things that you can try um but yeah again i recommend checking out the playbook on on that but yeah unfortunately it is the nature of the beast with some of these challenges but again avoid using words like free and shouting about the freebie too much um, and go for some more kind of challenge and cause related imagery in your ads uh, so you're actually reaching people that um, you know have a connection to your cause as opposed to just people that are looking for freebies Perfect. And then we've got one from Richard around challenge champions. Is it advisable to disclose to group members if staff members are taking part in the challenge too? 
it's entirely up to you obviously if you challenge champions and your group champions and your staff internally are taking part in the challenge it just adds to all of that group content that you're able to use um again you could might have a couple of champions or volunteers that are taking part or a staff member but not all of you have to take part um like we say it just it adds to the more content you've got in the group the livelier it will be the more things you'll have to talk about and be able to share those pictures around um in that group Great stuff. Thank you, Faith. No worries. I think that is it for now, unless anybody's got some last questions to throw in. Any final questions? Just in case you're typing a question out now or thinking about one to uh, ask, uh, just to mention as well that um, obviously we will be sending out the recording of this session along with the slides. Um, and uh, yeah, any, any questions that you have at all, uh, please feel free to come direct to your customer success manager or your support team. We'll be able to, uh, you know, get you set up with what you need to ensure that you're very uh, well ready to run a run a Facebook challenge and pull that super team of um, misfit Avengers together <laughs> to, to give yourselves the best chance of success. Um, also, just worth noting. This webinar is set up so that at the end, once you exit, you will be prompted to complete a survey. There's literally just a couple of questions. Um, we'd be very grateful for your feedback. It helps us form the sessions that we're bringing to you and ensuring that you know we're delivering content that you actually want and need. So if you could please pop that, uh, well, complete that survey, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Okie dokie then. I don't want to cut it short, but I'm not sure about um, there being any more questions. So thank you all very much for attending. Thank you, Faith, as well. No problem. Um, thanks, Jill. Thanks, Alex, in the chat as well. Really appreciate your support. And um, yeah, thank you all for joining. I know the weather's beautiful, so hopefully you get to go outside and uh, have a bit of a ice cream or a 99 <laughs> whatever it might be your I had a Mr Bubble the other day I don't know if anyone's had a Mr Bubble for a while but they're outrageous that reminded me of my childhood well all my lips went blue and I looked like I was seven years old but um yeah go and enjoy the sun have an ice cream um we look forward to chatting to you soon as mentioned any questions you know where we are and uh thanks for your time and thank you for joining thanks everyone speak to you later